There's a fallacy in life, Mike, and it's not apparent to everyone, but here's the fallacy. The fallacy is that we present a great amount of intellectual information, and that information, including our compromises and our assumptions, will drive the negotiation. But what's really interesting is that they do not drive a decision. They do not drive a negotiation. They do not drive a sale. What drives a negotiation is vision, vision of the adversary, their vision, not ours. Hi, I'm Michael Sinoff, founder and CEO of HardToFindSeminars.com. For the last five years, I've interviewed the world's best business and marketing minds. Now my challenge is to build the world's largest free resource for online, downloadable audio business interviews. I've learned a lot in the last five years, and today I'm going to show you the skills you need to survive. Hi, this is Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. You're in for a treat. We have a very special guest, and we're going to be speaking on negotiation. Let's get started. I want to introduce this very special guest, and I chose to do a recording with an expert on negotiating because negotiating is everything. Everything you do in life, from your family to business, has to do with negotiation. And I didn't want to just find you one of the negotiating gurus that teach the same old, same old. I found someone who has some sharp contradictions to what the mass negotiation products out there in the marketplace are teaching. And this gentleman's name is Jim Kemp. Jim's the author of two books. One, No, The Only System of Negotiation You Need for Work and Home, and his new book, set to be released, called called Start With No. He's the chairman of the Camp Group, founder, CEO, and president of Coach 2100 Incorporated, and inventor of a decision-based negotiation method. Since 1987, over 100,000 people have used his negotiation training and management system in more than 500 multinational organizations in a diverse array of industries to complete thousands of business transactions totaling over $100 billion. Jim Camp and his negotiating training and management system have been featured on CNN, CNBC, numerous radio shows, and in the Wall Street Journal, Fortune, Harvard Business Review, Fast Company Incorporated, Cosmopolitan, San Francisco Chronicle, the Columbus Dispatch, the Christian Science Monitor, and the San Jose Mercury News. Camp has lectured on negotiation at many prestigious graduate schools. He is a frequent conference keynoter on negotiation and has taught his negotiation methods in nine countries on three continents. For 20 years, Camp has been one of the best-kept secrets in the corporate world. He works with very strict confidentiality agreements. If you could talk to one of his negotiating clients, they would tell you he loves to hide in the weeds, advising his clients on what to do next in their negotiations. And in the next 80 minutes, you'll hear me interview Jim like he's never been interviewed before. We cover a vast array of topics. I also want to thank the consultants who took the time to send in some specific questions for Jim. We're going to handle those towards the end. And you're going to learn how you can be a better negotiator, how you can negotiate better fees, and how you can negotiate pricing and how you can negotiate with your client suppliers for better rates to save them money. So let's get going. We've got a lot to cover. This is the kind of interview you need to listen to two or three times, and I hope you enjoy it. So what is negotiating, and how much does confidence come into play in this game? Well, let's start with confidence. Confidence is everything, of course. But negotiation is the most misunderstood term in our arena today. You know, if you think back to the days of Lewis and Clark and Thomas Jefferson and the kings of England and France, etc., there was no such thing as win-win. There was no such thing as collective bargaining. Those are all invented by us human beings in the very early 1900s. So it's really been twisted, the meaning of the word negotiation. If you look at the Oxford Dictionary, which I did many years ago, and I was actually in Hong Kong when I saw it, and the definition said it's the effort to bring about agreement between two or more parties with all parties having the right to veto. Now, Mike, I didn't invent that. That's right out of the Oxford English Dictionary back in the 70s. But all these twisted meanings of negotiation, I've been in front of literally thousands of people in workshops over the years back before we had the capability of the Internet and our technology and in our workshops. 
shops, I would ask the question, what is negotiation? And people say, well, it's give and take. It's making everybody happy. It's win-win. It's only compromise as much as you have to. So it was always twisted. It's simply making agreements. That is negotiation. Negotiation, is there a history that you've ever researched of it? I hear that the Middle East are incredible negotiators, and they are brought up and taught to negotiate, where here in the United States that is not true. You're exactly right, but the reason they're brought up to negotiate is survival. They've got to make agreements to survive. And here in America, we don't have to make agreements to survive. What we're trained to do, sadly, and I've studied this in depth, Mike, I've got to tell you, and what we're trained to do is compromise. We are trained to be smart, so we make assumptions that get us killed, and we compromise. And it's really a sad state of affairs. Now, just so you know, this compromise mindset, this assumption-based mindset, again, came about in the very late 1800s, early 1900s with collective bargaining in the labor movements, and it was mandated in actual law. It's an act of Congress. The Railway Labor Act is an act that was brought about by Congress to collectively bargain where you're forced to compromise or you're not bargaining in good faith. You can actually be sentenced to prison if you did not bargain in good faith in those situations. So our society is steep in compromise and assumption. And of course, you know, assumption is a terrible thing, and I'll tell you why, because we're trained to be smart. I mean, every child comes home to look for the pat on the head from the great, great card, the A. So we're supposed to know. We're supposed to know all. And so you'll hear people say things like, and I'm sure your consultants all over the world, they'll hear people say things like, I think, in my opinion. Well, I've had a lot of experience. I know what they'll do. I know what they're thinking. Those are all literally killer statements that people make that get them in terrible trouble and cost them millions of dollars. If you were to study a culture and you didn't know anything about negotiation, what culture would you study to learn the most? Who do you think are the world's best negotiators culturally-wise? I think women. Why? They're not even a culture, right? That's right. I've got to tell you, I've trained negotiators in Russia. I've trained negotiators in Africa. I've trained negotiators in Tel Aviv. I've trained negotiators in Egypt. I've trained negotiators. I've got clients throughout the Middle East. I've got clients on the mainland of China. Culture doesn't matter. All the people who think culture is so... Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying the culture and the respect for culture is not important. But what I am saying is that the way decisions are made on mainland China, they're made the same way in Russia, the same way in the United States, the same way in Antarctica. It doesn't matter. That happens to be a fact. Now, the brain works the same. But why I say women is because women have a very solid tie to their emotions. They're very visual in many cases, and women make exceptional negotiators. If you think about the number of moms in the world who could see things that kids shouldn't be doing and would keep that rule alive that, no, you cannot do that, that will hurt you, those kinds of things, that ability is something that's extraordinary. How is negotiation different from selling? Well, that's interesting. I'd love to hear someone say, well, I'm going to convince them to do this, I'm going to sell them on that, and I'm going to bring about this, and I'm going to demonstrate that, and I'm going to prove it to them, I'm going to get them today. You know, I love these advertisements for these guys who write books about how you've got to have this positive attitude, and you have to really get out there and charge, and you've got to close, close, close. Sadly, that is a piece of negotiation, but what happens is people never climb the ladder with that mindset out there attacking the world. And unfortunately, they're not building the respected business relationships they could be building. Hi, it's Michael Senoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word -word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.